So there's been a lot of attention around the PS5 and the Xbox Series X launches last week. And while a lot of the feedback has been really impressive when it comes to the games and the gameplay, there is a topic that keeps coming up. And that is whether or not it supports Dolby Atmos and any of the other elevated sound formats, as well as its lack of support for Dolby Vision and HDR10+. So in this video, I'm going to discuss why I didn't end up pre-ordering the PS5 and covering off some of these topics, so stay tuned. So back in June of this year, I made a video about the PS5, and even back then there were a lot of questions as to whether or not there would be any Dolby Atmos support for the Disc Edition, and also whether games and streaming services would support these audio and video formats. I also raised questions around the PS5's ability to play 8K at 60 frames a second, or even 4K at 120 frames a second for their games. Let's take a quick look. I mean, for the games, I kind of think that that's a given that it won't be supporting Dolby Atmos. I think they're going to be trying to push their new Tempest 3D audio system. So fast forward to the release of the PS5, and we do indeed have confirmation on a few things. No variable refresh or 8K video. No Dolby Atmos support for streaming services like Netflix or Disney+. Plus. No Dolby Vision or HDR10+, which is essentially frame-based dynamic metadata. We do have Dolby and DTS Bitstream support for the Disc Edition, although you have to enable it in a few places to make it work. To me, this is a disappointing move by Sony. In an effort to promote their own Tempest 3D audio format, they are excluding a lot of people that may be looking at the PS5 as a multi-purpose media device. Sony is putting their own audio engine inside the PS5 already, so I can't understand their reasoning as to why they would draw a line in the sand here and deny or gate Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos from working in certain situations. The strange thing about it is that at time of launch, their 3D audio is only really supported on their headsets. As I don't have a PS5, I can't confirm or deny whether or not you get immersive 3D sound from a home theater setup that has a receiver. And my buddy Matt, who is in the B-roll you're watching right now, doesn't have any height channels in his setup. And I haven't heard or seen any videos confirming that it does yet either. So this leads me to why I didn't end up pre-ordering the PS5 for my home theater setup. In June, when I made the original video, I was in the beginning stages of a big home theater upgrade. Anyone that watches my videos will know I've been rebuilding my home theatre and that its primary purpose is for watching movies and TV series. I'm a PC gamer, so when pre-orders were available, my reason for being interested in the PS5 was to see whether it could be used as a UHD Blu-ray player. Because I have a 7.2.6 setup with a Denon X8500H 13.2 process channel receiver, I wanted to make sure that I had a player that could give the best audio performance. And as I saw the stouch between Dolby and Sony play out, I just didn't have the confidence at the time that the PS5 would support Atmos or DTSX for the discs and I was pretty sure it wouldn't be for gaming and streaming. I know I wasn't alone in thinking this, especially from the home theatre community, a lot of people were asking the same exact question I was. And while I know that Sony probably are not hurting from the lost sales from me or anyone else that thinks the same, it just seems to be a missed opportunity. As if I had had the confidence back then that it would, then I would have most certainly pre-ordered one. As I mentioned, I'm not a console gamer, so if I was to buy one, I really wanted it to be able to support those formats in my home theatre. As the landscape changes and more and more people are getting into home theatre and having audio systems capable of more immersive audio, I think that it will be a consideration that Sony will have to address in the future. I guess I'm addressing the question that I know a lot of home theatre enthusiasts have, and that is whether or not to pick the PS5 for physical media playback and streaming as well as for gaming or whether or not to go with a dedicated Blu-ray player and streaming boxes like the Nvidia Shield or Apple TV. Now that we know the limitations of the PS5 and that it really only supports Dolby and Atmos and DTSX on the disc edition playing back physical media, you have to weigh up whether or not that will be enough for you to buy it. But if you were holding out on the PS5 to use as a multi-entertainment device that could play discs, as well as support Dolby Atmos through streaming services like Netflix and Disney+, Plus and don't plan on gaming, then maybe it isn't worth getting just yet. So what I did end up getting was the Panasonic DP-UBA20. This player is getting a lot of attention at the moment and is often talked about when people are asking for a very good quality 4K UHD player. Initially, I was considering the DP-UB9000. However, as I'm not that keen on two-channel music in my theater, I decided to go with the A20 instead. 
The 820 has components from the 9000 and although the 9000 is a superior unit, for almost 1000 Australian dollars more I couldn't stretch my budget considering I still have a lot of things left to upgrade. I have left links in the description to the Panasonic UB820 so check them out if you're interested. And while you're down there hit the like button as well for me. All that being said, I'm certainly going to end up getting a PS5, but it won't be for my home theatre and I won't be getting it while there are crazy pricing and scalpers controlling the market. Not to be all negative on the PS5, I want to say how impressed I am with the specs. As I covered in my previous video, they have gone with an all AMD system for the CPU and GPU and this was a great choice as AMD are literally destroying it in both the CPU and GPU arenas with both Intel and Nvidia delivering pretty lackluster offerings recently. Sure, it's expected that the Nvidia RTX 3090 Ti will be a beast of a card but will almost certainly cost considerably more than the new AMD GPUs which are bringing big Navi to the table and the 6900 XT is going to be a phenomenal card so Sony made the right call there in my opinion with opting for AMD systems in their PS5. I wonder as well in the future whether or not iterations of the PS5 will allow for an upgraded CPU and GPU which will further extend its life cycle. So in summary the main reasons why I didn't pre-order the PS5 is that I wasn't confident that it was going to support the immersive audio formats that I really wanted for my home theatre which for the most part were correct. And I feel that I made the right decision personally for me by going with a dedicated Blu-ray player instead of pre-ordering the PS5. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Smash the like button if you liked the video. Comment down below letting me know whether or not you bought the PS5 for your home theater setups or if you didn't and why. Subscribe for more content like this and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now.